Thank you for the opportunity to participate in the opening plenary through a video message. I would have been delighted to participate in this conference in person, but unfortunately this was not possible due to timing constraints. The theme of this conference, the outcome economy, is really at the heart of current transformation of European industry. Industries undergoing rapid change. This will have a lasting impact. Technological developments are generating new products, new services and new business models. Manufacturing and services are today so interlinked that it is difficult to calculate where one stops and the other starts. The ability to innovate, introduce new goods and services with high value added for the users has become crucial in the global marketplace. Also jobs are changing. New forms of work are emerging. Automation is increasing. Some traditional jobs are declining. At the same time, completely new jobs are being created. Promoting a strong and high-performing European industrial base is a priority for the European Commission. We are doing our utmost at the EU level to help industry address today's challenges. Industry really matters. It represents 50 million jobs in Europe. It is the driver of innovation. Moreover, it has the potential to become the engine for a clean, smart and innovative economy. The economy of the future. Europe needs its industry to thrive, become more competitive and resilient in the global context. This is essential for job creation and growth. To be more competitive, the European economy should fully embrace digitalization, technological and social innovation, decarbonization and the circular economy. We need concrete actions at the EU, member states, regional and local level to create the best framework conditions for this to happen. It is not about keeping declining industries on artificial life support. Instead, we should invest more in the industries and workers of the future focusing on new networks, new manufacturing technologies and related industrial data services. This Commission's priorities have been geared to support the competitiveness of European industry. We are mobilizing all available policy instruments to support investment and growth. And we are working every day to address structural and regulatory barriers. European digital single market and innovation strategies have been conceived to help European companies become global players and pick up quickly on new technological trends. As part of our research and innovation program, Horizon 2020, a continued investment of close to 3.2 billion euros in key digital technologies such as nanoelectronics, photonics, robotics, 5G is planned over the next three years. Of this investment, 300 million euros has been specifically planned for the development of next generation of digital industrial platforms, enabling smart factories and services. On the regulatory side, this Commission is working to unlock the full potential of the single market by giving it a new boost with a set of concrete measures. Reinforcing the single market, which is the largest in the world, will provide a springboard for European companies to expand their business globally. For example, we have delivered measures for startup companies as drivers for change and have issued guidelines to support the emergence of the collaborative economy. Another good example is our investment plan for Europe. This plan is delivering concrete results and the Commission has therefore proposed to extend and reinforce it. According to the latest figures, the plan is now expected to trigger 194 billion euros in investments across all 28 member states. This represents well over half of the 315 billion euros target of total investment to be mobilized by the European Fund for Strategic Investment. EFSI has been fundamental to invest in industrial modernization. We have financed modernization of steel plants, pulp mills or food processing factories to improve 
resource and energy, energy efficiency. And we have founded cutting-edge innovation in manufacturing. Of course, financing is not the end of the story. We need functioning market structures and enabling regulatory framework. This is why the Commission also supports an ambitious agenda for structural reforms to sustain job creation and growth. All these actions will boost the EU economy and help new businesses to grow. They will also contribute to creating the right conditions for the emergence of the outcome economy. I trust that you will be discussing today many concrete examples and best practices on how to make the outcome economy work. Many of you are leading by example. Innovation ecosystems like DMEC can certainly play a crucial role and enable a very favorable return on investment. We need more positive examples like this. I wish you interesting discussions and look forward to hearing back from you.